for traffic ticket. It was uh, just a very ridiculous ticket. Um, I have a paper plate on the back of my vehicle, and for security purposes, I put it in my trunk all the time. As I was coming up uh, Hockley Road, which is like half a kilometer from the shelter that I run, uh, I thought, oh no, if I put the, the dealer plate on, hanging it out the back of the car. And there was a police officer on the other side, and he kept waving me through, and I'm like waving him through, and he's waving me through. So out of intimidation, thinking I better go up, otherwise I'm in trouble, I should have gotten out, checked my plate, put it on, but I didn't. Drove off the road, there was two lanes, we both could have turned, there was no reason for anybody to leave anybody through. And I went up the road, and uh, I called up my trunk, and I said, I have my plate. And he basically said, well, you didn't when I saw you, so um, basically I'm giving you a ticket. So I intended to fight it um, with the jurisdictional um, you know, identity uh, issues. And when I asked for the oath of the judge and the crown attorney and the police officer, they said, oh no, we don't do that. But immediately that set off bells in their head and realized they realized that this wasn't going to be a normal case. Immediately they changed judges. Ten police officers showed up. I was alone. I didn't have anyone in the courtroom with me. And so being this, you know, the age I am and stuff, I really didn't want to go to jail and I didn't want to be dragged out of the courtroom, which I have been before. So I decided that I would just <clears throat> go along with their jurisdiction and try to win my case on its merits. Well, that wouldn't matter. I really didn't do anything wrong, but it doesn't matter. They had me in there. Um, at the end of the, the entire case, they basically said, well, we have jurisdiction, we have the date, we have the time, we have the name, and we have absolute liability. So I'm thinking, okay, it sounds like I'm going to be, um, you know, charged here. Um, during the court case, I had held on to my Bible. I didn't swear on theirs, because it says you're not supposed to swear on your Bible. So I affirmed to tell the truth, and uh, I, I read the Lord's Prayer. And I said, you know, God's forgiven me for the silly little mistake that I've made, and I'm hoping you'll do the same. So um, he said, basically, you're going to be convicted, and I'm like, sounds awful. But uh, he said, do you have anything to say before I convict you? And I said, I just, I just ask for mercy, that's all. So he kind of looked down and uh, then he said, okay, well, we're, you know, based on the kind of work you do and, and who you are, we're just going to suspend sentence. Well, the Crown was not happy at all, but not at all. I said, thank you, and I left. Just as I was about to leave, uh, two of my friends came in the back door of the court and sat down. Uh, one was George Bothwell, which you may have seen on YouTube. He just recently won a case where they did not get jurisdiction over him. He was thrown into jail for I think approximately eight days. But we all stood behind him. He submitted his correct documents and he was free. All the charges were withdrawn and they were pretty serious charges. So um, I left. I was kind of disappointed that things didn't go way I'd expected to. A suspended sentence just means you get the charge, but you don't pay the money. So as we were leaving, because none of them would give their oath or identification in any way, George Bothwell, who's a very strong man, um, he's a farmer, but he's a strong personality. Um, he walked up to the Crown, and as we were leaving the courthouse, we were in the court parking lot, and he said to the Crown, uh, could I have your business card, please? And I had everything tape recorded because I always do it, a little tape recorder taped here. So I had it, that's my proof. Uh, the Crown says, I do have my card, but I choose not to give it to you. So I thought, oh, great, so I don't have to give my ID when you ask me. And that's basically all I said, got back in my car, and we left. That was it. Uh, yesterday, I it was yesterday, yesterday I get a pounding uh, on the door. Uh, at the shelter, so I'm at my work in front of volunteers and other people that live there, which is very, very embarrassing. We came to the door, Orangeville Police. They were completely out of their jurisdiction because we were OPP area. So they pulled their badges like this, and I'm like, oh, I'm scared. Anyways, I was, because it was very intimidating. They were on my property, even though I had a no trespassing sign, um, and they asked me who I was. Um, I was sort of knocked off my feet because I was concerned it was a family emergency. So I admitted my whole name because I was just ready for them to tell me something serious had happened to someone in my family. I couldn't in a million years imagine that they were there for this purpose. They said, we're here, and Rosemary and Don, who were staying with me, they came out to witness this, and they said, uh, we just want to tell you that you can never do that again. 
that that crown felt completely intimidated by you asking for his business card, and if you do it again, you're going to be charged. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You're in my house, at my work, in front of all my friends, and that's not intimidating? That he, what, one of them was a detective, and one of them was the sergeant of the uh, Orangeville Police. They both gave me my, their cards, and I was just absolutely dumbfounded that asking for a business card was considered intimidation. Um, I, I you know, went over and over again, I said, well, first of all, it wasn't me who asked. I don't want to pass you know, the responsibility on that someone else asked you. They said, well, it was your court case, so you're basically responsible for what your friends do. So I wasn't happy with that either. And it just goes to show me that they can go right out of their jurisdiction. Orangeville Police has no jurisdiction whatsoever in the Mono Township, the, the OPP would. How they found me, I do not know. That was not my home address, which is where I think they should have come if that was the case. And uh, Rosemary had a chance to explain a few of the reasons that we are so upset with the way that the police are behaving. Um, this is a perfect example. So I do plan to write a letter to the Attorney General, to the head of the Orangeville Police, and to the Crown Attorney, and ask him how asking for a business card was intimidation over what they put me through. I mean, I, I'm really glad that they didn't uh, arrest me and take me away, but it could go, it could come to that. And I, I feel that this is the reason we need to uh, become more aware of how it's becoming a police state and that there are no rules. They make them up as they go. I mean, who here if was asked a business card would consider that intimidation? I don't know. It would be different if I went to the Crown's house or followed him to the shopping center and asked him there. I could see that maybe that would be like I'm stalking him or something, but this was immediately after we left court. And uh, I spent the rest of the day really, really thinking about uh, what we, the people, need to do with respect to little things like this, because it could be you, and I don't think I'm any threat to anybody. And so uh, that's basically my story, and I'm really surprised that no one involved with the law whatsoever. So that's what I have to share, and I'm not sure who's next. Sorry. There you go. Thank you for listening.